What do we call different parts of our underwear? If you're not sure, this video is for you. This is Underwear to Wear, a practical guide designed to help you become a more confident buyer and wearer of underwear. Today we're talking about underwear vocabulary. Now, something that you don't know what to call is something that you will usually not engage with, kind of like a face you just can't put a name to. And ignorance is a poor reason to rock the wrong undies for you. So let's put a couple of names to these faces. Let's jump right in. Number one is the bands, all right? Underwear will typically have one to two bands. We have the waistband and the leg band, which you often will not see in boxers. The waistband is where you will usually see a company's logo and comes in a standard width of about an inch and a half. Each one of these are designed to hold your body snugly in their respective areas. Number two, the inseam. The inseam is the area from just below your investment package to wherever your underwear breaks. They come in a variety of lengths from zero to nine inches. Now a zero inch inseam is essentially a pair of briefs. They go up along your investment area and there is no leg coverage whatsoever. A three inch inseam is what you usually see in a trunk pair of underwears and they will break just about here. A boxer brief, which is what this is, usually has a six inch inseam and a pair of compression shorts or compression underwear will typically have a little longer inseam of nine inches, which will break somewhere just around down here. So your inseam and your leg coverage is something to think about. Number three is your pouch or fly, all right? If you have a fly, which means you have an opening to your investment area, it will come in three varieties. We have a horizontal fly, which usually runs across the top of your fly area, pulls out so you pull your investment package out so that you might use the restroom. You have a vertical fly, which is seen here, allowing vertical access to your investment area, and a Y fly, which comes down the center and breaks down into a Y, also allowing access much like the vertical fly to your investment area. Now a pouch has no opening whatsoever. That is usually some type of a cup or a mesh pouch that has no opening in the front whatsoever. So that is your fly or your pouch. Number four is the rear seam. Now we rarely ever think or talk about the rear seam. However, every pair of underwear has some sort of seam or stitching along the backside. The positioning can be different. Some of them are straight, some of them are curved as you see here. And that rear seam is going to affect your fit and your comfort depending on your body style and how much junk you have in your trunk. So the rear seam is something to not only think about, but it's something to become more familiar with, with the pairs of underwear you currently have and the ones that you will be buying in the future. Category number five is the fabric. Now the fabric breaks down really simply into two major categories. You have cotton and synthetics. Cotton has been used forever to make underwear. And in the last 15 years or so, you've been seeing cotton mixed with certain synthetics to give you performance cotton, all right? On the other hand, you have synthetic blends. Synthetics are uh, materials like polyester, lycra, and spandex. These will usually give you a little more flexibility and a lot more sweat wicking ability, okay? So fabric is something for you to start becoming familiar with and more comfortable with when you are buying and wearing your underwear. Now, underwear do some things. What does underwear do? Let's give it a few names. First is bunching. This, my friends, is bunching, all right? When your underwear ride up your leg and get caught somewhere in that mid thigh or just below your investment package area, causing you to walk around, pull up your pants and try to pull those underwear down, stretch them out through the day. Sometimes you walk around with your hands in your pockets trying to pull them down. That's bunching, fellas. And it is a product of the fit and feel of your waist and leg bands. Next, you have tugging. Tugging creates sometimes chafing, discomfort along your investment area, and again, can be a product of a wrong fit or a waistband that is just too worn. In the rear, of course, we have sagging, which is our old 
plumber's crack and we have riding which is essentially a wedgie right both of these can be products of your rear seam your waistband whether it's a bad fit or they are, are too worn and these are elements that we want to think about and try to solve so that we don't have these issues recurring over and over buying the same types of underwear that do not work for us or our body style so this is some of the vocabulary that we are going to use to describe express and talk about our underwear it's important so that we can become more confident buyers and wearers of underwear now guys if you run through this you go through your underwear drawer you go out shopping and you use some of these terms please let us know how they worked out for you was there something that we didn't cover that kind of brought up some questions for you or are there any questions about these subjects that might pertain to your body style your activity level your climate uh, or something else that is unique and particular to you. We want to hear about that. Please comment down below about these. Make sure that you like the video and subscribe so that you can be a part of future vlogs as well as our in-studio and on-location reviews. Guys, I appreciate you being here. Make sure that you keep an eye on your watch because very often it is time for a fresh pair. We are underwear to wear. I'll see you next time. All right, I'm starting to get a headache now.